Well, good evening and welcome to Holy FaceTime again. Um, tonight I wanted to talk to you about Mary. Mary, uh, most purest and holiest woman ever born. Um, I wanted to talk, you know, about, you know, she how she was prefigured in the, the Old Testament by the Ark. The Ark carried the word of God. And, um, you know, so she's the new Ark of the Covenant. Uh, she, she, she was the first to, to bear Jesus in her womb. She was the first monstrance. She was the first procession of our Lord when she went to visit Elizabeth. And uh, from her womb, uh, our Lord blessed John the Baptist in the womb. Um, so, you know, it's just uh, God created her from the beginning of time to be pure and holy. And just like the old Ark of the Covenant, she had to be pure and holy because she contained the Word of God. And I know for our Christian brothers out there who don't understand this and don't believe this, I'll give you a scientific analogy. Take a clean glass, take some mud and rub it on the inside of the glass. Now clean, now pour in pure, clean water. And now pour out what, what you had in the glass you're never going to get clean water out of it. So if your vessel isn't pure to begin with, you can't get purity out of it. So this is how our Lord had to make Mary the purest, holiest uh, from the beginning of time. So she wasn't just another vessel to um, do our Lord's, to, to do God's bidding. She was the vessel that God chose from all time. And he made her pure and he made her inlaid of gold. Um, and he kept up at her that way for all time. Uh, she was pure from the moment of her birth to the moment of her death. Um, and this had to be as well because we know that our God is a jealous God. He tells us that. And so when he claimed Mary to be the spouse of the Holy Spirit, uh, he was claiming her, the Holy Spirit, as, his, as uh, the spouse. And so uh, we know, nowadays we know, uh, that when a child is born, the child and the mother, they exchange, do a cellular exchange at conception. And this is proven. Uh, and that the cells of the, of the child stay within the mother's womb forever. So, I mean, so there's a piece of our Lord within Mary's womb forever. And, and God uses God. So God kept her pure from all time. The, no man could defile her. Um, just like the Ark uh, of the Covenant, uh, when the men who weren't consecrated to the Lord tried to touch it, they died instantly. Uh, so too it is, I believe, with Mary. Um, you know, she was considered sacred and uh, just like our Lord. And their two hearts are inseparable for, for all time. Um, you know, so we ought, we ought to honor her as we honor our Lord in the, in the sacrifice. You know, our Lord gave everything body, blood, soul, and divinity for us. And so too, because their two hearts are intertwined, Mary gave everything. And it's easy when we look at the face of Christ, we can see the wounds, we can see his blood, we can see the spittle, we can see the shame, we can see the cost of how much it cost to give his life for ransom us. But what we can't see is what on, went on in his heart. And if you imagine that the mother and child are joined forever um, by their cellular exchange, imagine too, this is why a woman feels so much pain when her child is in pain. Uh, she can sense that pain. And it's even closer in that relationship between our mother and our Lord. That Lord, that relationship is intertwined. And so whatever our Lord suffered, so too Mary suffered. So you can imagine what she saw, what she, what she heard, what she felt. Everything, everything that our Lord felt, she felt interiorly as well. And we honor her in the heavenly face devotion. We honor her as our lady of the holy name of God. And so too, because she always is, she always brings us to God. She always brings her children to God and she intercedes for us um, for
for everyone. She's always interceding for us. Uh, whether you believe that or not, it's true. She's interceding for you right now. And um, there's no name besides our Lord Jesus that is more feared by the devil than Mary because she's pure, holy, full of humility, and the devil hates humility. Uh, so at the name of Mary, the devil flees, just as he flees at the name of Jesus. And so let us re remember that and take into great consolement that Our Lady is always pleading for us. And she stands, when we pray uh, to our Heavenly Father and we offer up the adorable face of Jesus, believe me, she's with us right there and then offering up, offering up our Lord as we offer him up. So we thank you, Mary, Queen of Intercessors, Queen of uh, all virtues, Queen of Apostles, Queen of Angels, and, and our Queen. We thank you, Mary, and we honor you. We, um, we do not worship you, as some, some people think that we do. Um, worship is for God alone, and if people understood what worship, the meaning of worship is, they would understand that we don't worship her. Because the meaning of worship is involves sacrifice. And there is only one sacrifice in the Catholic Church. And that's the sacrifice of the Mass. And we, when we offer up forever and all time our Lord on Calvary when he died for us. Because our God is outside of time. So when we offer up the Mass, we're there at Calvary. Um, so just remember that. Reflect on that. And I hope everybody has a, a beautiful Lent. God bless you. Good night.